So I think it is a uh, time to start. So good afternoon, everyone. I'm uh, Dr. Laetitia Michaud. I'm a general rheumatologist at uh, CHU de Québec, Université Laval. I've been there for uh, 15 years now. And uh, I am also a clinical scientist working on uh, genetic uh, predisposition of uh, rheumatic condition such as bone diseases like uh, Patches disease, osteoporosis. I also study uh, rheumatoid arthritis and uh, Dupuytren's disease. And uh, today I will uh, present you an overview of uh, the main uh, rheumatological um, condition associated with type 1 diabetes. Uh, I apologize for my English, I'm uh, French. I will do my best to pronounce it uh, adequately the words. <laughs> So if you have any question, just use the Q&A box and I will answer the question at the end of the presentation. So today we will uh, review together the main rheumatological condition uh, that we can observe in type 1 diabetes. Uh, we will discuss about the biological mechanism underlying, underlying those uh, conditions. And we will discuss, uh, discuss about treatment option, option that can be offered. So rheumato rheumatological condition associated with type 1 diabetes are very common. So um, usually they are regrouped under the name of keroarthropathy, where there. So chero is for N and arthropathy is for joint. So, um, this uh, word of keroarthropathy will regroup uh, different conditions. So uh, the frozen shoulder, the adhesive capsulitis, which is a condition related to keroarthropathy, even though it is in the shoulder. And uh, we have the carpal tunnel syndrome, the uh, tenosynovitis of the uh, flexor tendons, uh, Dupuytren's contracture, and a prior thing, I will explain to you, it is related to the diabetic end. So what has been observed in the literature is that um, the frequency of those uh, conditions related to keroarthropathy uh, are more frequent when the, the hemoglobin R1C is higher. So there is a correlation in between the control of the diabetes and uh, the occurrence of uh, those rheumatic. Uh, conditions. When we have a look at what happened in women and men, we can see that there is some difference. So here we have um, a graph showing that in women, uh, in particular with type 1 diabetes, uh, we have more frequently uh, carpal tunnel syndrome and the uh, trigger finger. Uh, in men, we also have most frequently carpal tunnel syndrome and trigger finger but with, um, it is less frequent than uh, in women. Uh, you can see that it is also very frequent in type two diabetes too. So we will discuss about the different rheumatological condition by uh, site of uh, joint. So we will discuss about the end. We will discuss about the shoulder. We will discuss a little bit about the feet and we will discuss about other sites that can be uh, involved in a, a rheumatic condition associated with a type 1 diabetes. So the diabetic end uh, can be recognized with uh, the prior things, uh, which is represented here on the picture. So usually we can do the prior thing without any space in between two ends and uh, people with diabetes due to uh, stenosis of the tendon are not able to do the sign like this. So they will uh, have a space here. Uh, if uh, you do it on the table, just like on the picture, uh, it is not just like that. So it, 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 there is a space in between because there is um, some stiffness in the, in the flexor tendon. So the stenosing synovitis, so it is uh, uh, an, uh, a stiffness of the, the membrane, which is uh, around the tendon of the flexor of the, the end. 
So it is very uh, common in uh, diabetes. Here on the graph, you can see that it is also very common in non-diabetic persons, but it is uh, only one finger. When uh, there is two or more fingers uh, affected, it is more frequent in diabetic that is than in non-diabetic group. So it is associated with um, diabetes and uh, people with diabetes can have all fingers affected. So the trigger finger, I think uh, all of us have had that one time in our life. So it is a finger that uh, is just blocked at this and you need just to manipulate air in the palm to uh, open the finger. So it is related to uh, nodules represented here, which is uh, within the flexor tendon. And uh, with uh, the size of the nodule, the, um, the tendon is not able to go through um, the membrane here, and it explains why we have a trigger finger. So it is a very common condition with the diabetes and without diabetes too. So another condition related to diabetes, but which can be seen outside the scope of diabetes is a Dupuytren's contracture. So there is different stage in this disease. It is not related to a problem in the tendon. It is in the membrane uh, around the, ton the tendon, which is um, uh, called the uh, palmar uh, aponevrosis. So it starts with uh, uh, nodules uh, within the axis of the fourth finger usually. And uh, sometimes we have a pit, a kind of umbilication that can be seen. It is uh, the first stage. Then we will have a cord that will develop and can be seen and can be touched. It is uh, um, more stiff at this time. And uh, on the later stage, uh, we will have a flexion usually of the uh, two last fingers. So the, this uh, flexion is not uh, reversible without a treatment. So it needs to be treated to uh, just uh, uh, go back with an end uh, that can be open like that. So Dupuytren's contracture is a common disease. It can be seen in the general population. Here you can see some statistics of 4.5% of the population. In the province of Quebec, we do not know exactly, but we think it is about 10%. But if you go in some specific population, in population living with diabetes, it is higher. And even higher if it's people with type 1 diabetes, uh, so, such as proposed here, about 30%, uh, which is a uh, very high. Uh, in comparison with uh, rheumatoid arthritis, it is uh, less high. And there is also lifestyle uh, factors that, uh, that, uh, that are associated with uh, Dupuytren. So alcohol and uh, tobacco. And uh, there is also some physical uh, impacts of people working uh, with um, some uh, machines, so vibrating machine or people working on uh, uh, very uh, physical uh, activities uh, where they have a lot of contracture with the end can have uh, a Dupuytren's contracture and you can have several factors in addition. So di diabetes, alcohol, physical, and you can also have a, a, comp a genetic component in uh, this disease. So you can accumulate several risk factors. This disease is very common around the world. And here you have some uh, idea of the prevalence here in different uh, continents. In America, I guess it is underestimated here. I, at least in uh, Quebec, we are around 10% uh, of the population. So what happened when uh, we want to look in, into the end? Uh, what happened with Dupuytren's contracture? So in the first stage, the skin is normal, but inside, uh, close to the fascia, so palmar fascia, we can have uh, some uh, slight changes. Then the skin starts to be abnormal and the, the subcutaneous fat is just uh, uh, less higher than in normal and the fascia will go into the fat. 
So a, a sort of a kind of retraction will appear at this time and in the later stage. So the skin is just uh, stuck on, on the fascia and we do not have any more uh, subcutaneous fat in the, the palm. So another site of uh, joint involvement in uh, type one diabetes is uh, the frozen shoulder or retractile capsulitis. So it can be seen outside the scope of diabetes, but uh, it is very frequent in people with diabetes. So here you can see on the man what happened. So the problem is on the, on the right shoulder. So he's unable to open up the arm and to do the same than the other side. When we are in the front, when you can see it is here on the right, he's unable to open the arm on uh, his side, just like that. And uh, with uh, the physician, you can see that uh, he's unable uh, to move uh, the shoulder just like in, in the other side. So the abnormal side is here on the right. So even so the physician want to, uh, to just move the arm is unable to because uh, the retractile capsulitis uh, cannot be reversed just like the trigger finger. So uh, you need to have a treatment to improve this condition. So just a couple of words about the, the foot, the fit, uh, the Charcot's fit is not clearly related to uh, stiffness or fibrosis of the tendon of the capsulae, just like the other example we have seen uh, before. It is also closely related to uh, neuropathy, but uh, I think it is an example of what can happen in a rheumatic condition in, for people with diabetes. Fortunately, it is uh, rare. Uh, it is uh, less frequent than in, the, in, than in the past, which is a good news, I think. It is a very severe condition uh, characterized by a progressive destruction of the fit. So you can see here, it is a normal, almost normal radiograph. Then you can see here that the space in between join is disappearing. And here you can see that the, 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 the join are disappearing and the, the, the fit has changed uh, of size. And uh, it is a very important problem and source of uh, disability in people with uh, those kind of conditions. So the pathophysiology uh, involves the mostly the neuropathy uh, people with diabetes may have uh, may do not feel uh, very well at the in the, uh, on their feet so they will not be aware about the pain or something uh, that can happen in their shoes and they can give some uh, small uh, trauma uh, some uh, small hurt on the feet and uh, the people will not uh, be aware about that and it will uh, progress rapidly to a destruction of the joint that is not uh, that cannot be reversed by the treatment and the deformity of the feet as uh, shown on the previous picture uh, may uh, occur but it is uh, very rare nowadays but uh, a very severe uh, condition So other sites uh, that, uh, that, that can be affected uh, with uh, diabetes, so osteoarthritis, osteoarthritis of the knee. So in English, it is uh, rather confusing that uh, osteoarthritis is related to a um, generative uh, condition of uh, the cartilage, uh, whereas uh, rheumatoid arthritis is a non-inflammatory condition. So it is the same word arthritis, but um, the underlying mechanism are not the same. So osteoarthritis refer more to generative uh, uh, arthritis. Uh, especially uh, the knee osteoarthritis is uh, associated with um, the presence of diabetes, as you can see on the, this picture. So uh, there is a significantly more uh, osteoarthritis of the knee in people with diabetes, any kind of diabetes than in people with a normal glucose. So it is an, an association. There is also an association with uh, rheumatoid arthritis, which is more an inflammatory uh, condition. So you are here on the 
derive the normal glucose, which is the, the prevalence of refunds. And then if we go there on any kind of diabetes, we can see that uh, the, the prevalence of rheumatoid arthritis is increased, uh, especially with uh, aging and in uh, women, and also in Caucasian people, uh, non-Hispanic. So those diseases can be seen together more than uh, expected. So again, another association. Now, if we uh, go and see what happened in the family, you know that type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune disease, and uh, that autoimmune diseases can uh, accumulate in, a, in one patient or its relative. So here, it was a study in uh, uh, children with type 1 diabetes, and they uh, asked questions about the presence of uh, autoimmune diseases in uh, close relatives of first degree, the father, mother, sister, and brother. And what they found that in the subgroup of children with type 1 diabetes, uh, the frequency of any uh, autoimmune diseases as listed here, so uh, anemia, lupus, vitiligo, diabetes, type 1 diabetes on uh, thyroid diseases, it was 8.3% uh, 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 in this group, whereas in the control group, it was 2.5%. So there is a kind of uh, accumulation of autoimmune diseases in patients with type 1 diabetes on its relative. Uh, it has been shown in children, but also in adults uh, too. So, and also in a young adult with a type 1 diabetes, if uh, in uh, its uh, the relatives there is some um, uh, autoimmune diseases, uh, the, the people with type 1 diabetes may have uh, more autoimmune diseases. So it is the same autoimmune diseases, but um, the broader uh, spectrum, so rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, vasculitis, and uh, mostly uh, thyroid uh, disorders. So it can be uh, thyroid toxicosis or uh, hypothyroidism, or thyroiditis, uh, which is uh, very frequent in the general population, but mostly in uh, patients with autoimmune diseases. So what about pain? Uh, overall, people uh, with diabetes, so here it is uh, the first line uh, versus a comparison group without any diabetes, uh, will have uh, more uh, severity of pain uh, at their body. So here you can see that 80% uh, of people reported to have pain. Uh, so it is uh, more important than in people without any diabetes. And if we uh, want to pay attention at uh, the uh, interference of pain with daily activities, we can see that uh, a large subset of patients patient with, uh, with diabetes will have uh, pain that uh, may uh, have impact on their daily activities, which is uh, uh, significant impact on the quality of life for those people. So let's go and see what happened with uh, why it is like that. What are the biological mechanism um, of those uh, conditions? So it is mostly related to the control of the diabetes. So if you have uh, day after day uh, your glucose, which is higher than normal, uh, you will have some uh, change in your body and you will have some uh, glycation, which is a change uh, in, the, in some fibers of the collagen and it will accumulate some age, which is uh, advanced glycation and products. And those age will um, disturb the collagen fibers, uh, which are in the tendon, in the... Uh, membrane around the tendon, which are also in the membrane around the joint, just sitting at the shoulder. And uh, those age will also uh, be um, uh, go to a receptor of age, 
and they can give rise to other alterations, so accumulation of oxidative stress, some uh, modification injury in the vessel, in the small vessel, and uh, it will contribute to the stiffness of the collagen fiber. So it will explain what we have seen at the beginning of the presentation at the end, at the shoulder also. It, it, it gives rise to a di direct con um, consequence on those uh, joints. So let's discuss about the treatments. So you, you probably think that the uh, best possible glycemic control is uh, one option for sure. Uh, stop smoking and uh, imitation of alcohol for Dupuytrens or modification in physical activity for Dupuytrens too can be uh, helpful. Physiotherapy and occupational therapy is uh, very important in the management of those uh, conditions. So you will have exercise, you can uh, also have uh, some uh, advice. So how to use hand, how to use the shoulder, when you have some stiffness. And uh, you can also have some uh, splinting like that, but uh, usually we prefer uh, people moving their joints than the being uh, in the splint. And uh, you, analgesic uh, can be used. Anti-inflammatory drugs can be used also, but in uh, diabetes, usually we prefer uh, avoiding uh, anti-inflammatory uh, tablets so uh, when we can and uh, we can also use some uh, cortisone uh, tablets and uh, we usually prefer infiltration of cortisone to avoid uh, a higher uh, glycemic uh, so it is uh, um, when we can we prefer having a local injection joint injection or capsular injection when it is uh, possible and in some cases, uh, surgery uh, will be required for the trigger finger, for instance, for the, um, the carpal tunnel too. Sometimes it is uh, required. So Dupuytren's disease have a specific uh, treatment and a large history of uh, uh, different kinds of uh, medication have been tried. So you can see vitamin A, steroid injection, radiotherapy, and uh, more recently, the collagenase has been used just to try uh, to um, decrease the size of the collagen fiber to uh, uh, remove the cord on the deflection of uh, the finger. So what can be done? It can be done without collagenase, just with uh, an injection of uh, cortisone under uh, local anesthesia. You can uh, just uh, go uh, in the membrane around the tendon, not in the tendon. And uh, you can try to, to do uh, several pointing and try to uh, expand the finger at the end of the procedure. It is usually not painful under local anesthesia and it is uh, very effective avoiding an open surgery and uh, avoiding to stress the skin uh, at, this, uh, at this site. And another option is to do an injection, but with a collagenase, which is an enzyme that will just um, remove uh, some fiber of collagen uh, air uh, in the cord, but not in the tendon, which is uh, just uh, under uh, the cord. And uh, the objective is to try to make the finger right. And uh, the collagenase has been commercialized in Canada for several years, but uh, to my knowledge, it is no more commercialized uh, here in Canada for different reasons. It was very uh, expensive. The injection was uh, rather painful for a patient too. And, uh, at this time, the treatment of Dupuytren's disease in the province of Quebec may mostly rely on uh, open surgery, uh, mostly at this time. So the take home uh, message of uh, this presentation. So you have seen that uh, several uh, rheumatological conditions uh, are associated with uh, type one diabetes in the end, shoulder, fit on the uh, outside and uh, the advanced application product uh, uh, at, um, at the K 
component of the pathophysiology for the fit, for the Charcot fit. I've shown you that it was mostly related to the neuropathy. And uh, treatment are based on the local treatment on uh, mostly uh, exercise. Uh, you have noticed that uh, some association between diabetes and uh, osteoarthritis of the knee, for instance, or uh, um, rheumatoid arthritis or pain, uh, overall body pain, uh, have been associated with diabetes. And uh, in, within the family or relatives, uh, there is a, a higher frequency of uh, autoimmune diseases uh, for people living with type 1 diabetes. So uh, it is uh, important to be aware about uh, the, the specificity. So I thank you for your uh, attention. I will uh, stop the share and I will be happy to answer your question. So maybe at this time I will uh, start the discussion. So in the group in French, we have uh, the several questions of people asking why uh, you want to avoid uh, anti-inflammatory. Uh, usually uh, we want to avoid tablets of anti-inflammatory in people with diabetes because uh, some people may have hypertension. So it may increase uh, this problem if you take anti-inflammatory for a while. And uh, sometimes uh, you may have uh, some trouble with your kidney and uh, anti-inflammatory are not indicated in this uh, condition. Uh, there is also a local anti-inflammatory, um, so diclofenac uh, that exists in a kind of gel can be put on the skin. Uh, it is different for the gel than in uh, for tablets. So, but uh, usually we will not use anti-inflammatory or just for a couple of days with a small dosage. So one question, question so, So type 1 diabetes and rheumatoid arthritis for two years. So there is a, an association, both are autoimmune diseases. And uh, I also have in my patients, some people with rheumatoid arthritis and type 1 diabetes. I'm not aware about any problem of insulin resistance in this case. Uh, it is more challenging when we have both condition to treat and each separately because uh, with rheumatoid arthritis, we usually use uh, prednisone to control the joint inflammation and uh, we will disturb the diabetes by, diabetes by uh, this way. And uh, the arthritis will uh, limit the physical activity of patients with diabetes, which is not a good news because uh, you need to, to move uh, just to decrease your insulin resistance for just to uh, improve your diabetes. So it is a combination of two condi conditions that need uh, that your uh, boss or specialists have to discuss uh, together what is the best uh, for you. I'm not aware about any specialist of uh, both conditions. So usually we have a rheumatologist and another cardiologist who we need to discuss together. So a question about uh, Dupuytrens uh, in the family. And that I got a candidate for, for treatment. So in fact, there is a risk of relapse after treatment, but the indication of treatment will, de will depend on the function of your N. Here in Quebec, the plastic surgeon usually say if the people are able to put gloves, uh, if the people are able to put the hand on the table like that, they will not do anything. But um, if, if there is some difficulties, so the finger like this, it is clearly an indication of uh, surgery, of a treatment, but the risk is that there is a, a very high risk of relapse. And uh, usually people will need several sur surgeries uh, during time. So it may be very challenging because uh, at every time you do a surgery, you need to open the skin there. 
and uh, we can have some skin defect and uh, some uh, complication or difficulties at uh, uh, correcting completely uh, the finger. And uh, with the diabetes, uh, we sometimes the skin uh, cicatrization can be uh, less good. So all those factors can uh, need to be discussed with the surgeon. But uh, it is uh, true that when you have a family history of DP trans and a diabetes, uh, you are more at risk to have a relapse. Unfortunately, we do not have uh, collagenase anymore because collagenase have some studies that have shown that uh, maybe th there, there was a little bit less relapse than with open uh, surgery because it didn't, um, uh, it, they just go through the skin. They do not uh, cut the skin. So it was less invasive, but uh, unfortunately in Canada, we didn't, do not have uh, any more uh, collagen as, at this time. So maybe in the future, we will have uh, another option, hopefully. Ah, for the knees, so cartilage loss. So uh, osteoarthritis, uh, arthritis of the knee is also very common. So there is uh, some possibilities to have a prosthesis of the knee. So yeah, there are uh, some partial prost prosthesis, just one side of the knee or uh, total prosthesis, depending on the, the, the degree of uh, cartilage loss. And uh, I guess it is a, a, a good uh, option to uh, give you the possibility to, to move if you have a lot of pain of, uh, related to the osteoarthritis of the knee. Do not wait to have a muscle loss or um, not being able to do exercise to, uh, to go and discuss with the surgeon. Uh, another question uh, was asked at uh, the previous uh, uh, meeting in, in French. So the people ask about osteoporosis on type 1 diabetes. So there is a, a higher risk of osteoporosis, so bone, uh, bone loss uh, in people with type 1 diabetes. And uh, you will have a conference by Dr. Claudia Gagnon in March on this specifically on, uh, on this topic, just to give you some uh, advice about. Uh, this uh, also, it is also physical aspect, but it is not related to John directly. So she will discuss with you about that. Uh, maybe another point to discuss is related to osteoarthritis in the other um, joints and the knee. I just show you data on the knee because it was the most uh, uh, available on uh, the medical data, but uh, we also have uh, data on the, the hip and the, the back too. Uh, so we have another question related to frozen shoulder. Oh, yeah. So usually people with type 1 diabetes will have several um, joint involvement. Uh, I mentioned each one separately, but usually it is a combination of hand, knee, feet, shoulder. And uh, you, you do not, not necessarily aware that it is related to your diabetes, but uh, it is. And uh, it may explain why you accumulate those uh, conditions um, during uh, your, your the evolution of your disease. So the best thing to do is uh, to have uh, your glycemia, your glucose as normal as possible and to uh, do exercise, have uh, um, uh, some uh, lifestyle uh, habits that are uh, as much as possible normal, but uh, it, is a, it is a very challenging uh, condition for sure. So I do not see any questions. So I will thank you very much for uh, this presentation and uh, discussion with you today. And uh, 
I wish you a pleasant uh, afternoon now.